What is up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sibling Rivalry, the comic book club show hosted by yours truly, it's Ben Pye, and my sister. Anna Pin. Right Anna Dash Kin. Ah. Anna, Anna Dash Kin. See, I gave I, I let you have a dash here. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> were you gonna we, say the we same were, thing? We were both going for the same joke. So good job. Um Pat on the back. So Anna, this week's book. I picked this one. Yeah, tell us tell us about it. Uh tell us about the book or tell us why why I picked it. I well, picked it because I tell enjoy... us what the book is. Oh, okay, true. Uh Martian Manhunter, Volume One, The Epiphany. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh so I by Rob Williams. Up... Story by Rob Williams. Art by Eddie Barrows. Okay, but I never say that. You always say that. I'm... And oh, I okay. continued I... to say it. Sorry. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I picked this one in particular because I really enjoy the Martian Manhunter as a character. And you don't really ever get to see him much. Uh, he has very few standalone story arcs. I wonder why. Okay, I liked it. Apparently you didn't. Ooh. But. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Keep going, okay. Anna. You got this. I know, but now I'm like, you apparently didn't like it, like, at all, but we'll get there. Um, so this one in particular was way different from the older ones that I have read in the, the past. I've only read a handful of them. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the Martian Manhunter telling how he met all of the Justice League members as children. So, like, he was there uh, when Clark landed in Smallville. He was there when Bruce Wayne's parents died and there's like mini stories. The only reason I didn't pick that was because it was only at one, it was five issues, but the fifth issue is stupid. So <laughs> uh so I didn't want to pick that one. And this one was the newest one. I enjoyed the art when I looked at the little like three page preview type of thing way more than the other Martian Manhunter comic, which is also relatively, like, new, with that super funky LSD-esque art style. But so that's why I picked this one instead. Gotcha. Maybe you can you explain know, the story to me. Did you not understand the story? I mean, I vaguely understood the story. So, okay, so the premise was that Martian Manhunter... Um, has introduced himself to the world as a superhero and as as a similar hero t compatible with like Clark Kent as Superman being the last one of his species and stepping up to the plate and trying to be uh but he's not the last of his species. I said the premise of the no, story No, 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 no. I understand. I understand. I'm I'm trying so the this this was this was my first confusion, okay? Okay. So, he knew that he was the last of his species? Or, sorry, he knew that he wasn't the last of his species? Or he so found he was, out that he wasn't the last of his species? He was given false memories of the destruction of his planet. Okay. And upon seeing the white Martian... Right. It unlocked his real... Um memories which uh -huh. was his creation mm -hmm. so he's not actually a, i mean he's a biological being but he's manufactured uh, -huh. uh to fulfill a certain goal by the white martians which is you know to kill planet earth so that way so what you're, what you're saying is they took this character that was already kind of difficult to relate to because you know green alien and made him took the one thing that, that made him relatable. Like, you know, he's sad that his wife and child died. And they, okay, but they took made him that into, relatable thing away in this but story. But they made him into, like, four other characters that have relatable features. So I don't think that they took away so, the ability to empathize with the character. Okay. 
And then this is this is this is where my second part point of confusion happens. Were those people always people? Or did those people become people when he, you know, killed himself at the beginning of the book? So those people, how I interpreted it, was that those people became people when he separated himself and that they were also given false memories similar to how he was created. It's uh -huh. just that they were given false memories of a lifespan. But other people like knew who lifespan. those people were. Huh? But other people knew who those people were. Oh, yeah, and they did say that there were moments in there that, um, but they also explain why he split himself up and when he split himself up. What? When? Uh, later in the comic when they're talking, uh, when, what was his name? Mold? M-O-U-L-D? Uh, that's, that's how I pronounced it, too. Okay. When Mold was talking to uh, Pearl? Pearl? The Pearl. Yeah. Uh, not Pearl. The Pearl. The Pearl. Whatever. Um... He was explaining how they were, how they came to be, and he said that when he got to Earth, in order to better understand and experience the human world, he divided himself, his consciousness, and that's also why when you see him at the very beginning kill himself, and you have the red Martian dude, and amongst the white Martians, he's like, no, 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 like, only one part of him died. Because once a coward, always a coward. He he's still there. It's just right to identify what his other parts are. And then that that's when when he called out telepathically to the world. Yeah, Those because were... then the consciousness that was the superhero Martian Manhunter was still there. It was just right more like a godly spirit, but of himself. So obviously you didn't like it because you didn't get it, Ben. No, like, I, I, I get it. It was just, it was a convoluted story. I liked it. I thought it was really interesting take on the psyche of a superhero and how, I thought it was really cool. An interesting um, take on the psyche of a superhero. Of, like, of this superhero, yeah. Okay. I think I understand why Martian Manhunter doesn't have a long ongoing series, though. Yeah, like to to me, he has a few long ongoing uh, long series. It's just that they are currently not ongoing. The one uh, like that I was talking about with him being there for Superman and Batman and stuff that had mm -hmm. like fifty issues. So, a couple of years, yeah. three years. It's not Which long. is longer than it's longer than a few of the other heroes that we've read in the past. Not necessarily on this show, but right. Okay. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. So remember last week when when we were when we were talking about it, how I was kind of like, you know, Martian Manhunter to me is um what I viewed. Thor as uh, before the MCU. Uh -huh. Like, Thor without the Avengers, not a terribly interesting character to read. Um, Thor with the Avengers, uh, th that dynamic's a little more palatable. Um, so did you come out of this being like... And yeah, then, no. and then uh, Martian Manhunter, same kind of thing. Super interesting with the Justice League. On his own? Mm. Eh. I wanted to like it because, you, you know, like, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a character that's kind of out of the norm, um, not one that, that you read a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, I knew one thing about Martian Manhunter and, like, his motivation. And this comic book on page... What page is this? On oh, page amazing. 11, takes that and says, nah, that didn't happen. And I think that's why I liked it, because it was, it was very much wiping the story of the character completely clean. Yeah, and, uh, and that's where like, I'll, I'll give you some slack on, on the story, is 
yeah, this is this is a decent jumping on point if you know nothing about Martian Manhunter. Um, and if it if it weren't for my sleep deprived brain, I might have been able to follow the book a lot better than than I did. Uh -huh. um, You're blaming my beautiful niece. Uh, well, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe your wonderful sister-in-law too. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, I don't know. And, and, and that as a, as a story, as a story element seems like the biggest cop out, um, in my opinion, it's like, oh, yeah, I don't like how this happened. So we're just going to make it to where it didn't happen. Okay. Rather, rather than working with with what was there. They took something that had kind of an established backstory and were like. Hmm. Mm. Because like sit, try and sit here and tell me like so when was when was the I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up right now when was the first issue of any Martian Manhunter when was the the first appearance of Martian Manhunter Yeah, you gotta Google that. However, um, while you're doing that, I will say you Detective said that it was Comics. Like a, hmm? Detective Comics issue two twenty five, November nineteen fifty five. Are you telling okay. me in 1955 this was the, the whole plan for Martian Manhunter's story? Okay, but that's a ridiculous like No, but point how of view on it because it's How not many like the superheroes? Who... How many superheroes have had their entire backstory completely rewritten like this? Well, technically Flash several times over. But there have also been multiple different flashes. So, and I mean, the thing is, you're you're saying though that the history of the character is completely undone by how you're phrasing it makes it seem, and by comparing it to other superheroes, it's like that they completely disregarded it and didn't even mention the original backstory. Here, they have the original backstory. There They're are just two pages in the entire book of the original backstory. That doesn't matter. Yeah, but, again, because, no, because I'm calling it a cop-out. Is, is that it's not a cop-out. It's an expansion on the character in such a rich way. I'm not saying, like, necessarily it's the best comic on the planet, but I think that you're you're not giving it enough credit and that you're diminishing what the the writer did because he didn't erase the backstory in such a way that it doesn't like that it never existed he didn't recreate the character he developed the character with the original backstory and added a layer of oh crap <laughs> and it, he literally killed the character Liter like literally had the character kill himself and what not tech i mean the character that that we've known for the last what 55 so 45 plus 21 66 the years didn't change I, but you're all of a sudden adding what four new backstories to the character not four new backstories to the character because it's the same backstory to the character. You're adding four new layers of personality to the character, which is a character that you don't ever get to experience on his own enough to really say that you're changing the character so drastically. You want to say that, like, the 50 issues, like, a two-year-long run or however long that is, isn't a big deal or that isn't that long so then now you're also going to say that that established the character in such a great way that it shouldn't no, have, or in I'm such not, a strong way that it shouldn't have uh i'm that saying this is changing it i'm saying that the character that has been around for 66 years started out as something completely like the the backstory was its set thing the relationships were built with him 
on this set backstory. There were stories that went into this backstory, like with the Justice League. Yeah, like there, there are the entire Justice arcs League. of the Justice League based around Martian Manhunter and this backstory. And now those issues of like Justice League with where he's going, you know, trying to, to find out stuff about his past, trying to, you know, redeem himself for what's happened in his past, now mean nothing. But it... But you, so not... it's not just one character that you're... <gasps> Like, I, <laughs> it's not just one character that you're, like, completely, like, diminishing, but it's, like, now you're saying that all of this, all of this stuff that they've put into the past of his, of his story was for nothing. That's not true. Because, my hair flipped in front of my face, but because... All of the, the development that they had with the original backstory for this character contributed to uh, the other... To this story. So there were four split personalities. Uh -huh. And all of them ended up being developed based on the fact that they all then grew up knowing who Martian Manhunter is as a superhero because they were created at the same time Martian Manhunter as the superhero came to planet Earth. Therefore, when um, the... So there are four personalities. So then the three of them at the very end of the comic are saying like, oh no, you fucked up. Now you got to go fix all of this stuff. Those three personalities are the ones that are driven by the past experiences and the compassion of the Martian Manhunter and his relationship with the Justice League, with all of their experiences on Earth, and with everything that you already knew about Martian Manhunter. Again, in this book, though, like, no. yes, yeah. No, no, because what is, the what? motivations are still consistent from previous ones. It, I'm not talking about the... I'm not talking about the motivations, Anna. I'm talking about... You were just talking about that the character and all of his interactions and the storylines that he went through and that the Justice League went through are for naught and that don't don't matter. But those create the character and uh, the morals of the character, which all then contributed to the three split personality well three of the four split personalities although the fourth one like did have compassion okay he was, so like so logical let's, and he was kind of like let's let's take kind of this like, like again i'm not diminishing the fact that these characters were influenced by what happened in i am previous I'm, comics not in this one i am saying so when the justice league fights the hyper clan okay as a as a way for Martian Manhunter to get some semblance of revenge for Mars. So why did he, like, what, what's, why didn't this come out then? Like, because why didn't, didn't those? That that, he didn't you're know telling about... me that the, this telepathic group of species, like this telepathic species, didn't know what he was when they were fighting him. And all of a sudden, he encounters a random white Mar uh, Martian on the moon, and this is what he learns? Well, it was a visual kind of trigger. You see that right. in this. You see that in this, that it's a visual trigger, and that the word epiphany kind of acts as a, not as a code word, because, I mean, it's what they all call it, but that kind of jogged everything for him and then about but they're a telepathically linked the, species okay but like then the white gonna, martians then, as well okay, so those white look the hyper clan yes i can look, because they're no, one no, no, species you're not letting me finish i'm saying that you can't then look at other comics and other superheroes even if you want to be like oh okay but that's like that's marvel or this is d and for, this is dc you experience like loopholes like that or plot pl pl plot holes like that all the time. This is a pretty big one that is rewriting a character. Writing a character. Okay. 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 <laughs> For those uh 
listening to the audio version of the podcast, Anna is literally pulling her hair apart from both, like trying to just pull her head apart by pulling her hair from each side. Okay. You okay? No! Okay. So, <laughs> even though this is a Marvel comparison, if you're going to be this butthurt I'm not, about I'm not, I'm not even comparing not it to being, Marvel. Hold just, on! Okay. Hold on! Uh, about this character's mind being so blocked off that another species that is known for their telepathic links and all this and that can't even understand or can't read or can't gauge the reality that is the Martian Manhunter in this comic, then you would also be pointing out a bunch of plot holes in the X-Men where you have uh, some of the most powerful psychics who can't get past certain things. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that they right out said it in the very beginning, which, I mean, who cares? I do. Obviously! But you're being way too picky, especially about a comic that you didn't understand your first read through. No, no. So there were there were those two points that I I didn't fully understand. Here. And and now I you now I understand them. What? I said I don't care because you've made me mad. Oh. I think this is the first time that on sibling rivalry we have actually been arguing. Yeah, like actually, like legitimately disagreed on something. Um, you know what I did like? Yippee doodle day. Go Mr. ahead. Mr. Biscuits. He looks like a froggy. I loved Mr. Biscuits. That is, the, that is another one. So, so this is John. He split himself up and made everyone human except for Mr. Biscuits. Although Mr. Biscuits is a little fucked up. Maybe he was supposed to be human and it just was too much. Yeah, and so, like, e each split part of, of John is, like, is, like, a kind of, like, a specific part of him. What part is Mr. Biscuits? Is I don't remember, but he does say it. Does he? Okay. It, well, no, 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 not him. Uh, What's his face? The Red Martian, who is disguised as the... As the kid? Uh, yeah, as the kid says it and on the plane. It is on the plane? Okay. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I can't remember what it was, but they do say it. Okay. Is that here? But I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed every interaction with Mr. Biscuits. And then in, in this particular I scene. Should do. She was cute and how she like, liked Mr. Biscuits. Yeah. Um. There, there is a part of me that that would, would kind of like a whole comic based around the pearl. Yeah, you, uh, which is never going to happen because, you know. I don't. Yeah, but I'm a little bummed also, especially after she turned into. I don't want to say a Martian because technically John isn't a Martian either, since he was manufactured. She turned into a female version of Jean. Yeah. And that was cool. I think you passed it. That, that's a that's a possibility. I'm I'm going to the part where she turned into a Martian. Oh, yeah. But so then getting to explore her character as the thief and then also getting to explore her character as this Martian would be like, cool. Wait, I can I can jump hundreds of feet. Which I don't think it's such a far off um, or like such a, oh, this is never going to happen given female Thor. This is pretty much just a female Martian Manhunter. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could happen one day. Sure. Who knows? With the success of this, it, so I, I won't. This is true. <laughs> but it'd be interesting. I would read it for this show. I mean, you read this for this show. This is true. I did, in fact, read this for this show. Um, 
I also have to say, like, as far as the art goes, I did, I did really enjoy the artwork. Um, this was this was another one that was to me kind of similar to, um, uh, to Planet Hulk, where it was way more similar to Planet Hulk than I thought it would end up being. Yeah, like Towards artistically, the end, where I was like, wow. Like artistically or, or story wise. Like yeah, it, it it kind of it <laughs> it kind of was like it it ended and I'm like oh okay. Well, I didn't think that was how it was gonna end. Um. Yeah. So, so that happened. Um. But like, it, as far as art goes, again, it, it was it was broken up by these really awesome big scenes regularly enough to, to like break up the fact that I was not digging the story really like as much as I didn't enjoy the story, I really, really liked the, the artwork in this, especially this full page on the, um, on the left. I knew you would. The second I opened that page, I was like, it's going to be Ben's favorite. Art page um, like, with pearls like chin lifted up in one panel and like tearful in the other. Yeah, and 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 mold's face, like yeah. that is just that is pure rage, um, and, and and really awesome. I I really really I really like this page, and um, I don't know if it's like because of how much I love the color red, um, but like the the color theory on these two uh, on pretty much from the point where um, we start getting like the, the white Martians and the, the big beam of Obos coming. Yeah. Um, Obos all of, funny. all of that, all of that red just looked really, really awesome. And that red and white dramatic. And then like this, Sudden change. Really cool. I love mold in the background with his, you know, his his picnic table cape. Yeah. But yeah, um, like this, this to this to me, the these both pages, honestly, like I love the fight here. Um, and then there was another another scene with the pearl. Um, that I did really enjoy. It was when she was um, on the run and kind of uh, jumping down the uh, jumping down the building. I think this is it here. I, yeah. And like, oh. Um, like I just uh, love how DC does the acrobatic. I do too. Like, I, and this is this is similar. So our first our first episode of this, we did um, Spider Man Coming Home. And there was a, uh, not necessarily him jumping like through buildings, but him fighting Morlin. Um, and you saw like, you saw a full art Spider-Man and then a bunch of like these faded images of Spider-Man like fighting mm -hmm. all around him. And uh, that just brought me kind of back to, to that thing. And I was like, oh, that is, that is cool. Um, right. And, uh. Yeah, I really, I really... They also do it with Nightwing. Yeah, they do it with Nightwing a lot. Um, but again, it's like any time you've got some of those like really, really acrobatic characters, I love when they... I love how different, um, different artists will interpret that movement. Mm -hmm. Y'all know? Yeah. And with the... That big... Bleep, Piggybacking on your red comment, I thought that the color theory throughout was really well done. Yeah, With I mean, the blues in outer space and the pinks on the the subway. Uh huh. Like they station. they yeah. they did really really well. Um, defining space. Um, not 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 like outer space, but like the space that the the uh, the characters were always in. Um, yeah. Like, I was, visually, I was never bored during this comic. I loved the the sequence in the story where the Justice League was thinking that they were fighting. 
Yeah. John, I thought that was done really well. I agree. And I really liked how they drew the Martian Manhunter, both when it was the Pearl turning into the Martian Manhunter. Yeah. When you see Martian Manhunter in the beginning, when he became this like grotesque beast in the vision that he gave the JLA. And even at the very, very end where you see him in like his true Manhunter physique. I, I really liked his his character design. Um, I did really enjoy the art, which was nice. It, it, it was very, like, modern comic book art, but there was something about it that had so much energy and so much detail that was really I think I think what it really comes nice. down to in this one is is the color theory. I think the the use of colors and, and shadows and light um, throughout this book just is, is what kind of pushed it from, okay, yeah, this is, this is, you know, your standard comic, comic book art, art to, wow, this is, this is great. Um, like the, what, what was his name? Eddie Barrows. Um, he, he, he had a, a, a very good grasp of how important lighting is how important and um, movement yeah, no, is. Mood and was how, set extremely well done yeah. with the color theory. And um, and again, like emotion, like the, the, this, he hit kind of the trifecta of uh, again, like movement, emotion, lighting. Like those are those are like the three most important things to me when it comes to looking at comic book art, and freaking nailed it. I will say the pencil, um, the pencil drawing interjections. With like his past? E yeah, were oh. equally my favorite and my least favorite part of the book. Oh, really? Because I loved the art style and I loved how it was done, especially in the beginning with his past when he was relearning what his real history was. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that the how they layered it with the normal art and the pencil art was really well done but huh. then in and i think also on page what was it 40 no page 72 okay um i think that was another one where it was really beautifully that one's my favorite panel in the entire comic was a really well done integration of the the like watercolor and colored pencil mixed in with the graphic harshness of comic book digital art. Mm -hmm. But then in other pages, like there was a full page of like the pencil right next to a full page of graphics that didn't integrate into each other. So it was just a very jarring change you... in mood. Do you remember where that was? To the net. I didn't write that one down. Okay. I don't know where that one was. That was on a two page spread because I I was reading it single page, and then I was, and I turned the page, and it was all of a sudden colored pencil, an entire page. I was like, wow, I really hope these two weren't right next to each other. And I went into two page view, and it totally was. And I was like, damn. <laughs> Real quick, while we're, while I'm here, I loved the cover arts for yeah. how, how each of, uh, each part of John got uh, kind Martian of. Martian look? Yeah. I, I yeah, really, I appreciated that a lot. I really would want to read the next ones just to see if you ever see those characters turn into the Martian. This one. Yep. Uh, turn into the, turn into their own version of Martian Manhunter and how all of them are going to integrate into each other later. I really enjoyed this comic for its storyline and the art, but that one, like, two page did bother me, which was the only moment where I was like, Wow, do I like the colored pencil? Do I not like it? <laughs> or colored pencil. It's like graphite pencil. It's a 2B pencil and then watercolor uh -huh. for the coloring background. And I mean, it made sense also because he... The, it's, a, it's like a Mr. psychic dream kind of thing. Yeah, Mr. Biscuits was having a psychic dream. So like, it makes sense. It was just one of those things that right next to each other with zero integration, like the other ones were done. Um had with the layering of the digital and the pencil mm -hmm. yeah i i agree that is uh, obviously i did not read it in in two page view because i was reading on my tablet 
but when we uh, when we do the show for YouTube, we do two page view um, just because it's easier to plan for around like the mangas and all of that. And yeah, like on on screen here, it is very. Jarring. This page is very, very different from the next page. And I mean, it's it it's such a shock in the mood of the story too, because you're going from this extremely like you know high what, energy though? chase. And then all of a sudden, it's like a psychedelic dream. You know what I bet, though? I bet for the actual um, physical comic, I bet there's an ad right here. In on, between? On, yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. But um, that, which that would make it a thing. little visually less jarring. But, but yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from on that. So my other page that I marked... My favorite page was uh, the page 72. That's my absolute favorite page for artwork. Mm. But uh, for page 144, I liked this one when you also remember uh, how John dies in front of Flash. Uh huh. Because the color theory is the same. The way that they're disintegrating is the same. And these are issues apart. Yeah, like so, three, three issues apart. Uh -huh. Two or three issues apart, something like that. So, I mean, if they came out weekly, that's three weeks. If they came out monthly, that's three months. Mm -hmm. A big, I mean, like for a reader who reads week to week to remember would be difficult. So it's this pink, and then it goes into the red, but it's the same color theory family. And with the flash there, the red is still there, and how they're disintegrating, and how it's illustrated with almost like turning to bubbly foam type of a thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though it's dust, I guess, technically. But yeah, it was really, really beautiful. Thanos jumped really into Justice fun. League world and... Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah, page page 72 is definitely my my... Absolute favorite page <laughs> no, but... with um, Wessel, Detective uh -huh. Wessel's um, head turning into the epiphany showcasing of Earth being overcome by Mars and then the illustration of John's mm -hmm. consciousness as Martian Manhunter in this apocalyptic watercolor scene and then into the graphic art again. Like really um, ruining Daryl's Daryl's day by saying, "Hey, you you yeah. you don't have a brother, buddy." But I did, and he was so, and like the compassion in that line was also really beautiful. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, "I so wanted you to be real," um. But the watercolor for and the the joining of the the two mediums was really well done, especially with Daryl's head. Like, the entire scene is this graphic art, and then just Mars is watercolor, which really brings in everything on that page, and it's a really good. Well, Mars page. and Earth, because that's uh, DC behind them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mars becoming Earth, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, and again, like... Like obviously there there are like the alternate universe versions of all of these heroes. I'm I am just not sold on on what they they the decision that they made here. Um I am cur I am curious as to what implications this has on like Justice League. Um at this time period. Like I'd, I'd be comes back, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because right now there is no Earth. Right. So I'm I'm curious there. Um, I don't want to read any more of this, but I do right. want to, I do want to know what, like, what happens with the rest of it because, like, this was one where I think like. While I was reading it, I was I very to... specifically want to know what Batman thinks of all this shit, because... He wasn't even there. <laughs> I, I, I know, but you know he's... You know he's gonna find out. Yeah, but it's also one of those things... When was this written? 2015. 
When did Batman lose his memory? Oh, God. Was it around the same time? I think it was it was later because I, he lost his memory when I was in school, when I was in college. Okay. So I think he lost his memory like 2017? Um, that's a possibility. Um, but yeah, it's it's something to also consider in terms of how Batman would react is if he was Batman. <laughs> um Yeah, 2016. 2016, yeah. So yeah. uh I, I do want to continue reading. I was saying, like, I think that this is one where I was reading it, trying to figure out and understand everything that was happening. So it was kind of like an Inception mental read type of a thing, where I think it'd be more fun to reread it now that I know everything that happens and kind of find little Easter eggs in it. Um, which you should obviously do. She said with sass. Mm. Maybe. He said with, like, yeah, that's not happening tone. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I definitely also didn't go into this note thinking that I was going to leave off with such a big cliffhanger. Yeah. I, I, was, I was kind of, I was like, oh. Great. A cliffhanger, and I know I'm not going to continue reading this. I guess I'll have to Google what happens. I I enjoyed it. I thought it was an extremely interesting take on a character that is usually only depicted as... Being part of a team. No, he or... has his own standalones, but he is usually depicted as a very, like, for lack of a better word, subdued superhero. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have, like, um, an abrasive or overwhelming personality or character, even on his own. Yeah. So then getting all of these personalities and how we, having knowledge of just the fact that they didn't, they were never fully a part of superhero Martian Manhunter. So it means that his character could be really cool and and multi-dimensional when, when they all meld back together. Yeah, I'm trying to see how many, like, actual comics Martian Manhunter has gotten. And in the 90s... What? Is he had a thirty six issue run? Uh, yeah, that one, the All American or whatever. This one, and then that psychedelic one are the four that I know of. Right. And I I couldn't get into the art of the psychedelic one. Which, if anybody reads the or watches this or reads this and is like, oh, I want to know which one you're talking about, type of a thing to go and read it. Let me know if the storyline is really good. And I feel like the art is probably a hit or miss with most audiences. Kind of looks like everything went through a lava lamp. Mm -hmm. But the cover art matches the interior art for those. It does indeed. Does it? Yeah, um, because I I saw the cover and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I opened it and I go, oh, less cool, less cool. <laughs> I love Mr. Biscuits. Give me a Mr. Biscuits comic. You liked all the personalities and yet you didn't like the comic. You liked the Pearl and you want her to have her own. You want Mr. Biscuits to have his own. I didn't care for Daryl. I thought... And I didn't care no, for, I for think... John. Like, it, it... Okay, I like John, but I didn't. Fine. I, I didn't care for the story as a whole. You can like characters in the story and not like the story itself. I'm not really saying that you didn't like... Like, I'm not pointing that out because you didn't like the story. I'm more so pointing that out because you didn't like the character. 
yeah. of Martian yeah. Manhunter, and yet you liked all of these other characters that are still Martian. And Manhunter. I I explained that at the very beginning, like I they know, took and this, I still argue. they took this so huge relate, like they they took the one thing that made Martian Manhunter relatable, and were like, nah, nah. That didn't happen. Which is also funny, because you're saying that it's relatable to lose an entire planet. Because if you're saying that it, it's not it necessarily okay, the mourning fine, of I'm sorry. a child and son, there's still a relatable mourning. It's just that he has to now mourn the loss that he experienced, but never actually physically experienced, because he mentally went through it all. So technically, he has to, and he says this also in the beginning, he has to go through that loss twice once because he thought it actually happened and the second time because he realized that this horrible past wasn't actually his past at all yeah you and i are just gonna have to agree to disagree on that because that's fine that's fine i'm interested in like I think I really maybe hope maybe relatability is it. yeah i think relatability is the wrong word more humanizes the character is the word that i'm looking for it's like a Superman, like there's nothing human about Superman other than he looks human. And the fact that he grew up on a farm in Kansas and grew up to be the all-American yep. boy just is an alien. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I mean, you don't like Superman that much either, Anna. Come on. I love Smallville! Yeah, because they actually made him a more human person. He didn't, like, fully, fully have, like, grasp on his powers at the time. So it was a little less, like... Oh, so it was I'm... an origin story type of a thing? No, not necessarily that. It's more... Well, I mean, it was. It, yeah, but... <laughs> Grow your hair longer, Ben. That way you can pull it like I did. It's payback! No, what I'm, what I'm trying... Is, like, we agree that Smallville is enjoyable. Like, we're not disagreeing yeah. on that. But, like, Superman, comic book Superman, grown-up Superman. Like, oh, cool. I'm invincible. Nothing can hurt me. Oh, boo-hoo, I'm invincible. Nothing can hurt me. Yeah. Um, those, those are the general Superman stories that I've read, guys. Maybe we should read a Superman book. You can pick it so that the score goes to you, though. Um, uh, I have picked a Superman book, but I need to wait until it becomes, you know, more than just a couple of issues because it's an ongoing run right now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, so I guess let's get into our ratings. I don't want with... to hear more about you being wrong and me being right. There's no right or wrong when it comes to an opinion, Anna. Um, <laughs> so story, yeah. that, that goes to me first. Obviously, I was not the biggest fan of it. I I don't like when, like, again, I, I kind of find it a lazy storytelling technique to be like, oh, let's make this interesting by saying that nothing that happened to this guy actually happened. Ooh. Um, it's, it's one of the same reasons why I, I did not like Lost um, as a TV show. I thought it was awful because it's like, oh, lost. oh, God, it is the most overrated show that ever existed. And I'm going to get a bunch of hate for saying that, but I don't care because um, a lot of people love that show. Um, no, but it, like, like, nobody liked how it ended. Well, and, and you know why nobody liked how it ended? Because it took everything that happened throughout it and was just like, nah. Um, and then the same thing with, uh, like, I, I loved How I Met Your Mother, hated how How I Met Your Mother ended, because again, uh, spoilers for a show that's been over for years and years, um, you know, the, the show's all about how Ted meets the mother of his children, and, you know, there there's this, like, Kevin, this this relationship between him and this the this the girl Robin um, throughout it, and at the end you finally meet like the mother character, and uh, they get married. The mother dies, and the kids are like, "Yeah, you can marry Robin, Dad." It's like, what? 
you just took this this whole show and 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 the reason why I was watching it and said, yeah, but don't worry, Robin and Ted still get together. Go to hell. <laughs> Uh, I didn't watch either one of those shows all the way through. I actually didn't even watch all of one season of either of those shows. Yeah. Lee really liked um, Lost. So. The only reason I tried getting into Lost was because of um, one of the characters from Heroes was in it. The mother. Peter's mom. Mm. Or at least somebody told me that she was. And I watched like the first five episodes. And I didn't see her, and I said, "Never mind." She's not a main character in it. That much I that much I can tell you for sure. Not a main character. I only watched five episodes, which I don't even think I watched five full episodes of How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. But whatever. That's we fine. I mean, How I Met Your Mother is <laughs> essentially just Friends. It's just a more modern Friends. Um, you haven't given your number. Yeah. Um. Uh, God, it, it's it's hard to rate this one because I really didn't enjoy it, but I don't think it was so, so bad that it's like a one. Um, but, like, I'm... The, the characters had some... some interesting, like, things to it. Um, I think I'll give it... I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 on story. I really did not enjoy the story at all. I thought it, I thought it was I thought it was lazy. I thought it was con it, again, and maybe I'll find it less confusing if I get more than 3 hours of sleep overnight. Um and ever decide to reread it cuz that's going to happen in my yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, it might it might um but yeah, I think I'll give it a five. I'll give it a five. So this is obviously a book that we very much have drastically opposing views on. Yeah. Especially, mostly with the story. Uh, not so just with the, the story. With the, the art, I think we're probably pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, because with the story where you think it was lazy, I think it was extremely... It was so brave of them Rich to try to do it. Rich and complex. No. In a way that was I don't know that you know what those fun. two words mean. <laughs> In a, a way that was like a fun brain teaser. Because I read it trying to figure out who all of these characters were. And I didn't really understand until it was outright said. Or I didn't catch oh, yeah, on. No. All of the characters are said. John. Yeah. And so it was... I thought it was a fun little brain teaser kind of a story. I thought that um, how they decided to develop the character of John and how they broke up his personality in such a way can really layer and make this character that is really just sat in a corner most of the time when you see him in a in a comic. Like, he isn't a very prominent outspoken bold character and i think that all of these different emotions that you get to see and all of these different characters through him breaking up his himself gets to allow him to be a little bit more more bold and forward as a character and as a superhero which is really important also for your own standalone had a very dramatic ending which is going to make people want to read it i still want to continue reading it um it's one of those ones that i do think i probably want to read now that i know who all of the characters are so i mean it's a first off and i'm not gonna say like i loved the story so much that oh my god martian manhunter is one of my favorite superheroes this is not one of my favorite comics that i've ever read but i it was much more would you recommend this to somebody who wants to read comics? Who wants to get into comics? I would recommend this for anyone who wanted to know more about Martian Manhunter. But this doesn't tell you much about Martian Manhunter. But it has the opportunity to make him a much more prevalent character. Especially in later, later times that you're going to see his character develop. 
through even just inju uh, just not injustice <laughs> uh, through Justice League and like a couple cameos, I think you're gonna have a better respect for the character. Mm -hmm. Don't be mean because this is my opinion. What happened to opinions aren't wrong. Ben. I never said your opinion was wrong. Your face said it. Nope. Anyway. My face said that I disagree with your opinion. <laughs> um, so, but because of that, I wouldn't, I would give it a seven because I thought it was interesting. I want to continue reading it. I would recommend it to anybody who wanted to know more about Martian Manhunter. I would recommend it to somebody who... Which no one's ever uh, going to say. Oh, I want to know more about Martian Manhunter. I said that. As a comic book reader... Someone getting into yeah, comics isn't that... going to be like, oh, yeah, let's uh, let's start with Martian Manhunter. Who's that random guy in Justice League? He's green. He goes through stuff. He can read people's minds. Um, uh, I what... do recommend, like, I didn't have us read it because it's too short, in my opinion, for us, or, for us to read it. And I really didn't want to read the fifth issue again because I didn't like it. Um, but Martian Manhunter Revelations, when he, when you get to see him meeting all of the Justice League members, or all of the Justice League to members. To me, I think that would have been more interesting, personally. Yeah, but then you have to read about Spectrum, and I don't like him. <sighs> Which was why I didn't pick it. Because it's five issues, and I only like the first four parts. I might have given this a higher score, just saying. Okay, well, read it on your own time. <laughs> or, okay? Um, it is worth it. But, I mean, that one I would recommend for anybody who's starting out reading a DC comic because you get a little bit of every character. Right. Um, and you get to know more about Martian Manhunter at the same time. Whereas this one, I think this one is just, like, a really cool and interesting take. And apparently, you know, I suck at picking my DC comics for my brother. But that's fine. I want to know how everybody else felt about this one. I gave this one a 7 for story. Maybe it should have gotten a 6. I don't know. I really liked it. Uh, I do want to continue reading it. Now I want my brother to read Revelations, just like how last time when I picked a DC one, I wanted him to then read the Green Lantern ones that preluded to... I would um, I would be really, really interested to, to hear some comments down below on, on what other people on think of the story of this one. I want to um, know what this one got rating. I'm gonna Google it. Got on like Amazon and stuff. <laughs> I think it got. I think it got decent ratings on. Oh, I can't. I can't look at it right now because I'm sharing my screen. Um, <clears throat> but uh, also, Revelations is only issue by issue. It's not a volume book. I gotcha. I don't think. Okay. It's on uh, DC, the DC website, the DC Unlimited thing for free. DC Universe Infinite, DC Infinite Universe, whatever. Yeah. So on Amazon, got 4.6 out of 5 stars. Yeah, I don't ever really trust the ratings that people give on, like, Amazon and stuff like that. Just I do for books, but, like, novel books, I don't usually trust it for comics. Um, yeah. Uh, tell, tell, give, give us, give us, give us, give us, give us that art rating, Anna. Give us that art. Comicbookroundup.com gave it 8 out of 10. Okay, anyway. Um, so art-wise, uh, the only thing that really hinders it for me is, which is probably going to sound extremely silly given that it's this one moment in it, but that really jarring jump from graphic to pencil and watercolor which for me knocks it down a peg or two, which is so sad because in other moments they integrated it so beautifully. The mood was captured beautifully. The color theory was amazing. The projections of John throughout when he's speaking to his other personalities, I thought was also beautifully captured with the shadowy um, depiction of john like uh -huh. a silhouette but slightly colored so it's more like a shadow a colored shadow um similar to how like you see them all jumping and it's like a shadow of that character has like a film effect over it i thought it was really well done um i thought the character designs were super interesting and i loved how 
uh, especially Martian Manhunters, like the green physique of him, even within Biscuits and the Pearl, how that development happened, I thought was beautifully illustrated and well thought out and showed a really cool take on character progression, but outwardly through different moments of him and through different personalities of him. So art-wise, I give it an 8 out of 10. Maybe an 8.5 out of 10. Okay. Um, I think I, I I agree with most of, of what you say. Uh, again, for me, like it, the art made up a lot for for this book and made it a lot easier to read the story that was not super interesting to me or making me particularly happy. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think art wise, I'm, I'm also giving it an, an eight. Um, but because again, it had it was broken up really nicely. Um, and I might actually give it a nine out of 10. I mean, give it a nine. Again, because I, I think Eddie Barrows, he he hit the trifecta, he hit emotion, he hit movement and he hit lighting all really really well and uh it was it was beautifully done um yeah so i'll give it a nine out of ten and your overall you gave it an eight for art right uh eight or an eight and a half yeah eight right. you can say eight so overall you know, decimals i'll gi- i'm giving it a seven because wow, I mean, that's way higher than I thought you were with your well, stupid four. No, no, because I changed it to five. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, and I, I, I get, I'm going to go back to my my story my story rating a bit. It's one of those like I didn't love it and I didn't hate it. Like I wasn't sitting there being like, oh my god, I can't believe I have to sit through and read this. It wasn't like the Green Arrow comic, um, but. I didn't really like what they did and how they did it. Um, and just real quick, I'm also looking at the Goodreads r- ratings because, you know, there people actually like write what, what they think about it. It has a 3.4 on Goodreads out of 5. Just say. That's also not bad. It's middle of the road. It's like... Middle of the road, you gave it a full. Oh, I'm sorry, you gave it a five. You Which is me. middle when it comes to a rating out of five. I corrected myself, sir. Okay. What are you giving it overall, Anna? Uh, what I seven and eight and a half. It yeah, sure. Seven and eight and a half. I want to give it an eight. An eight? It made me doubt myself in this entire conversation, even though I very like strongly have fought my point of view. I'm now like looking I'm... back on it, going like, "Fuck! I should have just picked Revelations and sucked up the set." Uh, okay, the... great. So thanks for dropping the f bomb in here and making me have to list this as explicit. I did that 20 minutes ago, Ben. Did you really? Yeah. No. Oh. Well, I'm glad so. you told me because now I need to remember to mark this as explicit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I. This is one that I would be extremely interested for people to read and comment what they they thought of, since we had very strong opposing views on yeah. the story. Absolutely. I'm. I'm thinking the same thing. Man. <laughs> well, I, I'm like at a loss for words. I didn't think you necessarily like after I read it. Definitely walked away from it, and I was. My first thought was, wow, this is a very similar storyline to Hulk <laughs> in terms of, you know, the war <laughs> aspect and the Earth being out of luck. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, next book. And also in the, the ter- uh, when we were talking about, like, Jekyll and Hyde and Hulk... Mm. This was also quite literally a Jekyll and Hyde, just a multiple Jekylls. Uh, sure. Or not multiple Jekylls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Jekyll Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So yeah, 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 yeah. Multiple Jekylls. 
I'm gonna Boom. I'm gonna disagree with you there, but like I, again, I I think that's gonna or rather agree to disagree on that point. I didn't gather a lot of Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde kind of thing. I mean, I, I, I guess I can kind of see what you're. I can see what you're saying, but I'm talking more on like the literal than the yeah, like just the this this all of a sudden split personality kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not yeah. talking like the characters themselves depicted Je- mm-hmm. Doctor Jekyll and yeah, Mister yeah, yeah. Hyde. That's I'm fair. just speaking on like the the very shallow literal premise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, again. I think if people want to see, like, what I consider to be really awesome comic book art, this is one that I would recommend. Um, like, this is, I think, some of some of the, the better slash some of the best comic book art um, that we've had on the, on the show, in my, like, in my opinion. I know I've given some art a 10. More. Um, but like, as far as, yeah, especially the newer, um, yeah. In my head, I know which comic I'm going to give a 10 for the artwork, but I have to layer <laughs> for the build up. Yeah. Watch people like actually read all of my DC views and be like, or my picks and they're going to be like, wow, and you're a DC fan. You stink. Well, I mean, you, you, you pick some you definitely have unique choices. Okay, but this one, though, there was actual reasoning, and it you didn't go into it. You didn't go into it confused. You not understanding the story is one thing, but, like, you didn't go into it confused about who the character was. Right. And I didn't mean that, like, you as a targeting towards No, 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 I know. Then. I meant that you as in, like, a universal, the reader. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so next week uh, is my, my pick. Um, we, uh, we're doing Hellboy, Seed of Destruction, um, which is another volume one. Um, but I, I also really didn't know where, where to start with Hellboy. Um, I just know that I, I, I want to, to read it. And I think the Hellboy comic is one that was not a super long ongoing one. <laughs> So I think if you're going to pick up Hellboy comics, you're going to want to pick it up from the beginning, and that's why that's why I chose Volume 1. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it for our, for our independent pick, um, Hellboy. Heck yeah. Heck boy for the PG audience. This right? did not turn out how I expected this to turn out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Except I'm not, I because would... it's my opinion. But I would just, it's, what were my last ones? So Robin Wars, which I really mainly just picked because I wanted you to read it. Mm -hmm. And that one I scored badly specifically because it was not a good jumping on point. Right. Yeah, but I didn't, and I wasn't paying attention so much to that for that one. Mm -hmm. And then with the Green Arrow one, that was on my personal to read list. Well, so was this, wasn't it? No. Revelations was on my personal to read list. Gotcha. And I read it. And I mean, the thing is, DC doesn't interest me as much as, as like Marvel does in general, storytelling wise. I, I might, I'm obviously in a minority while you and I are talking. I, I liked this character every time like I see him that I wanted to know more. I've really liked his character every time we uh you watch like a movie and he appears in it. I, I thought that he was a really interesting character that I wanted to know more about. How many movies does he actually appear? Oh, like the animated movies. The animated movies. Yeah, yeah. Not the... uh, and again, I think in I think and in the, the Justice shows. League, he's super interesting and, and fun fun to watch and like all of that. Yeah, but he's so quiet. Yeah. Um so so then what is, what is McGann in all of this? I've never actually met her character ever in a comic. Is she not ever in the comics? I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> we're all just, um. But 
yeah, I don't know. Um, meh, 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 meh. Uh, hopefully, we. I, I, I think. I don't think this was so bad that like you should feel bad about this as like your pick, but. I don't think she was introduced until way later, and that wasn't even that was in uh, the Justice League. Oh, 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 wait, go forward. Uh, first appearance, Teen Her Titans. origin is one of the remaining Martians. Huh. So it's very similar to anybody who read. Um, she first appeared in Teen Titans number 37. She was created, da 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 da, fill out the one year later cast of the DC characters following the events of Infinite Crisis. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So, next week Hellboy, Seed of Destruction. Be there or be square. Um, leave comments down below. Like, subscribe. Um... Follow on Instagram. We have a the si not the we have at sibling rivalry on Instagram for all of this. We have a website which is oh you can go to itsbenpai.com slash links um, and that'll get you everything that you need for sibling rivalry. It'll give you the uh, podcast. Uh, link it'll give you the YouTube channel, the YouTube playlist, the most recent episode, all all of the above. Yep. It'll also tell you where to follow us. Um, On the social like, medias. Yeah. Which where can people find you, Anna? On the Instagram, I am at Anna underscore Riddick, and I am also a Riddick underscore Designs. How about you, Mr. Ben Pie? Well, you can find me pretty much everywhere as It's Ben Pie. Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitch, the whole nine yards. Um, I actually, if you are uh, listening to this on the day that it comes out, which is Wednesday, um, on Monday, I released the first episode of my uh, Pokemon Genlock challenge on my YouTube channel. So you should definitely go swing by and give that a watch. Um, it was it was a really great start. Great start. Yeah, Gen One Gen One is harder than I remember, um, especially as a randomizer. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where you can find me, um, and I guess. Until next week, everybody. Shalomaste. Shalomaste.